Today we've got Luke in and Luke's presented with a bit of a thoracic extension restriction. He's been doing a lot of CrossFit training with some um, competitions coming up and he wants to improve his overhead position for his snatches and overhead squats. And so what happens when you've got that thoracic extension restriction, you start to sort of get locked into this position and then in overhead, everything sort of falls forward. So what we need to do to correct this is we need to treat all the muscles that are internally rotating his shoulder, mainly being the pecs, lats, and subscap. And we might do a little bit of work through the back of the shoulder blade too, because they have this excessive pressure pulling them while they're in that position. Once we've loosened up all those muscles, we're gonna go through and mobilize the upper back through with some joint mobilizations and then a chiropractic adjustment. And once we've sort of done all that form, I wanna show Luke today some exercises that you can also do at home to improve his posture and make sure the back moves as he gets into that overhead position. So to start with Luke, let's get you laying down on your back and work through the pecs. So the first part of the pecs is the pec major, which is this part here. And it's sort of involved in bringing the arm down and forward like that. And sort of is a big player in posture if you're sort of working at a desk with that internally rotated position, it can just sort of tighten up and adapt to that position there. And it is junky. Good, get a couple more passes. One more there. So further to the pec major muscle, we want to also treat the pec minor. And this is probably more important because rather than just pulling the whole arm forward, it actually just internally rotates like that because it controls where the shoulder blade sits. So this one, I like to lift it up, shorten the muscle, and then we really sink down here and stretch it down and back. Good. And so the pec minor, not only does it affect the upper back posture, but if it's really nasty, there's some arteries and nerves, the brachial plexus, which run right under it. And if it's very tight, you'll also sort of develop symptoms down the arm of pins and needles called thoracic outlet syndrome, which I see a lot with computer workers. So let's hit the other side as well. And that's much worse. And I would say, because Luke's at a computer a fair bit during the day, it's because this arm will be his mouse arm. So generally that's forward and then it's sort of, creates a shortened position and it just sort of locks down and the fascia just sort of junks up. And we'll get into his pec minor now as well. It'll be interesting to see how this feels. Yeah, that's bad. Good. Okay. So another muscle that really internally rotates the shoulder is the lats. So Luke, let's get you on your side. Now, a lot of people think, oh, the lats will bring the shoulders back, but in actual fact, they're an internal rotator as well. So they'll sort of have pretty much the same effect as the pecs do on that sort of thoracic extension and pulling the, the back into that slumped position. I actually think these are worse than the pecs today. <laughs> How are they feeling, Luke? <laughs> One more. And I would say in CrossFit training, the lats get pummeled. Everything that you do, hanging off a bar, all the different sort of pull-ups and bar muscle-ups, toes to bar, wreaks havoc on this muscle. Let's flip over and do the other one. Hopefully this one's not as bad. I have a bad feeling it will be though. Yeah, it's not good. Good. But what I'll see, once we sort of loosen up this muscle, 
just the force production, because you have more range, people instantly get more endurance and sort of stronger contraction. They might get, you know, that extra rep with their pull up, pull ups out just because of the improved tone of the muscle. So the next muscle I want to hit is the subscapularis, which is actually part of the rotator cuff. It is on the underside of the shoulder blade, comes through the armpit and attaches into the front of the shoulder, doing a similar action in the sense that if it's tight, it'll just internally rotate this and pull the whole sort of upper back forward. So loop onto your back again. And to access this muscle, we sort of come right into the armpit, sinking down and actually pushing on the underside of the shoulder blade there. And it is ropey. So up and over. And again, this is another muscle that if it's really nasty, you'll get symptoms down the arm because one particular nerve passes through this and it's the ulnar nerve. And so if you feel like almost a change in sensation or tingling in the pinky, it could be up in this muscle here. That combined with a thoracic extension restriction, we know it's definitely coming from the shoulder. Let that go. There we are. Let's hit the other side there. Oh, oh, oh. Good. Two more passes, and then you've made it. All right, now that we've worked through all the muscles that are really sort of dragging that shoulder forward, the next thing we need to address is actually the spine itself. And we'll do that with a, a mobilization to start with for, for that thoracic spine. Thoracic spine, Luke, you're gonna put your hands like this, come through here, drop your head onto your forearms, and dropping through. And what I'm doing here is we're just sort of forcing a little bit of extension into those joints. So this is the part that really, really gets stuck. And so by taking that joint to its end range and just giving that little bit extra movement there. And how's that feel, Luke? Very good. Good. So once we've done that, work through each segment. I like to do about three passes on each one. Then we're going to do some joint manipulation. So Luke, let's get you laying face down now. Feel that's really stiff right there. Big breath in, hand out. So we've just got the mid back. Now I want to try to target the joints right at that. We call it the cervicothoracic junction there. So for this one, we put your hand under that thigh. You're going to create some tension at the joint. And then the neck there, and big breath in, hand out. Good. All right. All right, now we've released that joint there. Let's flip over and we'll get the lower cervical sort of joints as well. I can feel that right side is quite restricted. So nice and relaxed through there. Good, a little bit through the other side there too. Perfect. Now that we've released all the muscles and through the spine, all those joints there, let's look at doing some exercise so that Luke can actually get these results to stay. So the first one I like to do is a modified puppy dog pose from yoga. So Luke, let's go up onto your hands and knees on the table. What you're gonna do is reach those arms forward, drop this all the way down. Now the goal is to create motion through here. So Luke, you're gonna sort of visualize your sternum pushing down, perfect. Now you'll hold that and then breathe in, and out, sink in more. Breathe in, and out, sink in more. And I like to repeat that for 10 breaths, then we come out, give it a little bit of a rest. So you can come out of that now, and that's a great one to do at home. Once you've mastered that, and you can really sort of drive that sternum forward and get that, it's almost like a, a jammy sort of sensation as those joints mobilize, 
we like to progress that to another exercise. So the next exercise is a variation of that puppy dog. But what you're going to do is drop down onto your knees on here. You're going to put your elbows, both of them, on here. And then your hands are going to come pretty much up to this upper part of your back there. So probably more flat hands so you can guide that. And the same sort of idea, we want to drive the sternum down as you create extension through that spot. And you can even push down with your hands to sort of guide that upper CT sort of junction to get that. And the same sort of thing, we're gonna breathe in and out as we mobilize that spot. Again, once you sort of really got good control on this, we take it to the next level, which is the wall angel. Exercise the wall angel, we start them against the wall. And the goal is to have their spine sort of flat against the wall. But Luke, he's got a little bit of an arch here and that sort of indicates that it's restricted in that upper thoracic region. So for him, gonna try to just push those ribs down and even in that position, I would imagine you can feel that up through there a little bit. Now we're going to sort of force a bit more mobilization. You're going to take your arms and try to come up here. You probably won't get full range. And you can see the hands are just starting to kick off the wall there. So that's the range you're going to work with. And then you come back down and taking it back up through that range. And what you'll find as you do this over time is you're going to get a tiny bit more range of motion with each rep as the days sort of progress until you sort of get to that fall all the way up here with the spine sort of flat against the wall and the ribs down. So if you enjoyed that treatment and how we sort of work on thoracic extension and mobility, it's worthwhile looking at this shoulder treatment, which I'm going to link here, but otherwise I'll see you guys next time.